Hey guys, it's Drew from Central United Methodist. And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. That's Matthew chapter 25, verse 40. In this next series for Central Youth, we will be talking about what it means to go against the grain of what society says is right, and instead jumping into life by audaciously leading with love. Will you dare to be rebellious? I'll see you Wednesday. Hey guys, I'm Drew Herring, the Director of Student Ministries at Central United Methodist, and it is finally time to register for Breakthrough again. Breakthrough is the best spiritual retreat for students I have ever seen. We have a table outside so you can register and I'll see you out there. There are people who do not have enough to eat, that they're not able to provide for their own food and the other necessities of life. And often food goes lacking. I'm Bob Peden, missions pastor here at Central. And I want to share with you today an opportunity we all have to get involved in feeding those who are less fortunate in the Meridian area. Once a month, some of the members of our church gather at New Life Community Church with others from the community to help package food for the food bank that is housed there at that church. The food actually comes from the Mississippi Food Network, which provides it to food banks across the state at no charge. Volunteering to help with this food bank gives us an opportunity to follow Jesus' command for our lives uh, to love other people as we love Him. It's a great way for us to get involved in His mission in our world. If you want to come and be a part of this, contact me ahead of time at 601-938-7868 this is an excellent way for our church to be involved in helping to feed the community here at Central.
Hey guys, it's Drew from Central United Methodist. And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. That's Matthew chapter 25, verse 40. In this next series for Central Youth, we will be talking about what it means to go against the grain of what society says is right, and instead jumping into life by audaciously leading with love. Will you dare to be rebellious? I'll see you Wednesday. Hey guys, I'm Drew Herring, the Director of Student Ministries at Central United Methodist, and it is finally time to register for Breakthrough again. Breakthrough is the best spiritual retreat for students I have ever seen. We have a table outside so you can register and I'll see you out there. Hey guys, it's Drew from Central United Methodist. And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. That's Matthew chapter 25, verse 40. In this next series for Central Youth, we will be talking about what it means to go against the grain of what society says is right. And instead, jumping into life by audaciously leading with love. Will you dare to be rebellious? I'll see you Wednesday. We're so glad to have you here this morning, whether you're here in the sanctuary 
or whether you are joining us online. Before we begin, I would like, uh, there's a couple of announcements that I would like to um, remind you of. We have several things. We are entering that time of year. So we have several things going on. Uh, one of the first, I will tell you that in observance of the Thanksgiving holiday, the office will be closed on Thursday and Friday of this week. Um, next Sunday marks the beginning of Advent. And so we always mark that Sunday with our Advent Fair on Sunday afternoon, and that will be from 4 to 6. If you'll just look at the announcements on the back of your bulletin, uh, take it home with you, maybe you stick it on your refrigerator, and that'll kind of help you keep abreast of what all we have going on. We will open our church back up this year for our Christmas parade. We need volunteers for that. On Sunday, December the 5th, we will have our traditional worship Christmas celebration. And on the 12th, we will have our contemporary worship. We also have um, nights of worship on December the 19th. Like I said, we have a lot going on. So I would encourage you to just put this on your refrigerator or somewhere where you can refer to it. Um, I would also like to take just a moment to talk about Backpack Buddies. It'll be very brief. This year, we have 20 backpacks that we are packing each week. That is uh, five meals, wait, yeah, five meals, two breakfasts, and three snacks over the weekend. It's like 21 different little parcels that go into a backpack. For 20 backpacks a week, that's a good bit of food. And during COVID, we depleted all of our resources. So if you would just remember when you go to the grocery store to pick up a few items, put them in the shopping cart that's out there on second floor, that would be a huge help as we try to build our, our supplies back up. We come to the time in our service now where we begin worship. I would invite you to silence your hearts and your minds with the chiming of the hour as we begin worship.
we continue in worship, I would remind you that while this is, as a nation, we celebrate the Sunday before Thanksgiving, as a church, we celebrate Christ the King Sunday. So I invite you to stand for our call to worship and remain standing as you are able for our opening hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Holiness is the beauty of God's temple while time shall last. We worship God in the sanctity and freedom from our sins, which Christ gives us through his life's blood. Our opening hymn this morning is numbered 715, Rejoice, the Lord is King. We'll sing all four verses. Would you join with me in the affirmation of faith as it is found in your worship guide? We believe in one God, creator and sustainer of all things, father of all nations, the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, our teacher, example, and redeemer the Savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, and in grace equal to every need. We believe in the Word of God, contained in the Old and New Testaments, as the sufficient rule both of faith and of practice. We believe in the church, those who are united in the living Lord 
for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God as divine will in human society and in the family of God where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness in the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. In Christ's name, amen. Today's reading is from the Revelation to John, the first chapter, verses 4 through 8. This letter is from John to the seven churches in the province of Asia. Grace and peace to you from the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come, from the sevenfold spirit before his throne, and from Jesus Christ. He is the faithful witness to these things, the first to rise from the dead, and the ruler of all the kings of the world. All glory to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by shedding his blood for us. He has made us a kingdom of priests for God his Father. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. Look, he comes from the clouds of heaven, and everyone will see him, even those who pierced him and all the nations of the world will mourn for him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God. I am the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come, the Almighty One. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Friends, this morning we have another opportunity to go to the Lord in prayer. So this morning I invite you to bring all of your burdens, all of your worries and cares, and lay them at the feet of Jesus as we approach that throne of grace with boldness together. Gracious and loving Lord, we give you thanks for who you are and for this day, for this opportunity to come into your house with those of like faith and to spend time in your presence. And Lord, right now in this service, we pause to acknowledge our need for you. Lord, on our own, we will surely fail. But when we keep you first in all things, you guide our path. And you make those paths straight. God, we pray for this service this morning that your word spoken here would find a fertile place in our hearts. So that our roots can grow deep in your love. God, we pray for those in our faith community who may be suffering from illness, depression, sadness, loss, whatever the case may be, we ask that your Holy Spirit would show up even now, bringing peace and comfort in their time of need. Lord, for those in our community that do not yet know you, we pray that today would be the day that they recognize your voice, the calling of your grace, to come and to be a part of your family. Lord, we have so much to be thankful for. Help us to always remember it is from you that the good things come, and we'll be sure to give you the praise. For we pray this in all things, in the name of Christ, our King, your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. If I sort of look a little um, like um, I don't know what I'm doing today, it's uh, because um, at the end of this service, uh, my wife and I are headed to Georgia um, for Thanksgiving and to see our grandchildren, and uh, uh, we'll be away for several days, and uh, so um, we're just really really excited as much as we love you we can't wait to to see our uh, um, well our grandchildren and our son and daughter-in-law as well so but uh, especially those grandchildren there are a couple of things I want to say before I read the scripture Um, I have six pledge cards uh, here that haven't been filled out and um, they're looking for somebody to fill them out so if you haven't uh, turn in your pledge card yet, um, please do so. You can mail yours in. You can um, call Jan at the church office and tell her uh, what you want the amount to be, uh, or you can come by the church office, or you can um, place it in the offering plate. We just want to make it as easy as possible. But frankly, we're lower right now than we've been at this time. And um, so we really... um, if you've been, if you've forgotten about it, or you've been meaning to get around to it, uh, please um, get around to it. I did want to let you know that uh, for our day of generosity, I had the number written, Bob, on um, what I was using at nine o'clock, but it's eighteen thousand seven hundred and something. For is that close enough? That's close enough for our day of generosity. So we want to thank you for your generosity. Uh, That money, if you remember, will go to uh, the Meridian um, um, Ramp Ministry and the the free clinic. See, I didn't write this down. It's hard to remember. And then to the United Methodist Committee on Reliefs, uh, Hurricane Ida relief to both Mississippi and Louisiana. 
So because of your generosity, um, there will be many who have, will be helped. You can look around you and see that uh, there's plenty of room for the Holy Spirit in these pews. Um, and we would like for them to be filled with the Spirit. Um, we hope the Holy Spirit's in every pew, but would also join with the Spirit of uh, human beings. Uh, I really want to build this service up. Um, and uh, I want to remind you, and Sabrina mentioned this earlier in her list of announcements, but on December the 5th, we will have a special traditional Christmas um, ministry uh, here at the 11 o'clock service. The contemporary service will have their um, Christmas uh, program at a different date. But at 11 o'clock on December the 5th, our choir will be singing. Um, it'll be a service of lessons and carols. Uh, we'll have some of the children singing. And so it will be a Sunday that you don't want to miss. And so that may be the Sunday that helps build back this attendance. So I'm just giving you fair warning that uh, you've got two weeks to invite others to come and be a part of this special service at the 11 o'clock traditional service. Our scripture reading this morning comes from John chapter 18, and I'll be reading verses 33 through 38. And if you're able to stand, would you stand now in honor of the reading of God's word? Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. As always, Lord, I pray that you would deliver me from me. Hide me behind the shadow of the cross so that people see Jesus instead of me. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Normally, I would be preaching a sermon about Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. Do you know that people of other faiths, I'm a really close friend back home with a Jewish lady who walks on the treadmill beside me at the gym, that is when I go, and uh, she says, you know, Thanksgiving is her favorite holiday because it's not a threat to any faith, no matter what faith background or religious background someone has, we've all got lots for which to be thankful. And um, so that just kind of has stuck with me, that um, that's the beauty of thanksgiving. We all know that if we were to count our blessings, um, we would go on and on and on and on and never get through. Paul writes that in all things give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ concerning you. So while I'm glad we have a special holiday to remind us to give thanks 
frankly, every day should be thanksgiving. And while I'm not focusing on thanksgiving in this sermon today, I want to be clear that just because I'm not preaching a thanksgiving service in no way negates the power that comes from us being a thankful people because we certainly are blessed. But on the church calendar, this is the very end of the Christian year. The Christian year begins with Advent, and next Sunday we start the season of Advent, four weeks, four Sundays, preparing for Christmas. Advent is a word that means come or coming, and we focus on the coming of Christ as a baby in Bethlehem. But we also focus on the fact that there will be a second coming where Jesus will come in all of his glory. And then we celebrate Christmas. And there are 12 days of Christmas. The church calendar doesn't limit Christmas to just the one day. Until the 6th of January through the 5th of January... We're still in the season of Christmas. So if you see somebody on January the 4th, it's perfectly okay to say, Merry Christmas. And then on the 6th of January, and we have the season of Epiphany, where we remember the coming of the wise men to see the child Jesus. And then we have Lent, which is 40 days before Easter, not including the Sundays where we get ready as we focus on the sufferings of Jesus, we look at our sins and we get ready to celebrate Easter. And then there's a season of Easter where we focus on the resurrection of Christ and what it means to us. And then comes the season of Pentecost where we remember the coming of the Holy Spirit. And we have a whole season of Pentecost. And then the church year ends with a day that is called Christ the King Sunday. Where we focus upon the fact that Jesus should be King or Lord of our lives. In our text today, Palm Sunday has already happened. The crowds have gathered and they've, they've treated Jesus as a hero. There were at least two of his disciples, Simon the Zealot and Judas, who were zealots who wanted to overthrow the Roman government. They were excited with Palm Sunday as they saw the crowds. I mean, the crowds, the religious officials were afraid that there was going to be mutiny. The crowds were so big, spreading their palm branches, yelling, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna is a word that means save us. And so these two disciples thought, yes, this is the day when Jesus overthrows the Roman government and sets him up himself up as an earthly king. And it was the fact that Palm Sunday did not end the way they wanted it to end that many scholars believe that Judas was so bitter. He could not believe that he had followed this man for three years, hoping for that day when victory was going to come and that it was his bitterness that caused him to betray Jesus with 30 pieces of silver. And now here we are before Pilate. And Pilate asked him, are you king of the Jews? For that's what these disciples and some in the crowd wanted him to be, king of the Jews. And Jesus said, you say that I am. And Pilate says, I'm not a Jew. Why would I say that? 
Are you a king? And Jesus says, for this very reason I was born. For this very reason I have come into the world. For this time, meaning to die on the cross for the salvation of the world. And my kingdom is not of this world. If it were of this world, my followers would come and they would overthrow. They would do exactly what these two disciples wanted to, him to do. But my kingdom is not of this world. I have come to proclaim truth. And then Pilate asked the question that all of us must ask. What is truth? What? is truth. These days you cannot find a news broadcast where you get objective news. It doesn't matter where you get your news from. They're all biased. They're not telling us the whole truth. And Jesus asked the question, what is truth? You see, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Jesus is the true Savior of the world. When we follow Jesus, we are following truth. And truth is doing what Jesus wants us to do. You may have noticed that the title of this sermon is King for a Day or King Forever. Because you see, there was that one day that people got caught up in the crowds. It's easy on Sunday morning to follow Jesus. About the only temptation you have right now is you know, falling asleep during the preacher's sermon, or your stomach growling and you're wanting the sermon to end so that you can go somewhere and get something to eat. That's about the only temptation you're facing right now. It's easy to be a Christian in church. It's easy to say, Jesus is my Lord, Jesus is my King. But what about the other days of the week? There was a Presbyterian minister somewhere in the 1700s that wrote a treatise entitled, In My, in My Heart, Christ Home. And he compares our hearts as the home where Jesus wants to live. And I'm going to just sort of update it a little bit and change it a little bit, but the idea is his. This man hears the doorbell ringing. He walks to the door and he's happy to find that it's Jesus at the door. And he's, he's eager to open the door and tell Jesus to come on in. He's thankful that at least some of the house is clean. He's got plenty of food in the refrigerator, and uh, uh, he's almost prepared it. And so he invites Jesus to the dining room, and he prepares the table. He's not sure whether he should serve Jesus any of that wine that he's got down in the cellar. So he serves water, and lo and behold, they haven't sat down for very long before he looks over there, and Jesus has turned that water into wine. They have a very pleasant conversation. Everything is going just well. Until the man tells Jesus that he has some after-dinner plans. Jesus says, well, can I go with you? And... I mean, the man thinks, no, I, no, I can't take Jesus where I'm going. And he says, no, um, my friends wouldn't be comfortable 
having you tag along. Uh, but you see, I've got the den in there, and I've got a big screen TV, and I've got all the live streaming, and I've got surround sound, the music. I've got books on the shelf. I've got plenty of snacks in the refrigerator if you get hungry or thirsty. While I'm gone, you just sit and enjoy yourself. Jesus again Ask if he can go and seems to be very disappointed with the man's answer. The man goes to a nightclub and he is gone until way after midnight. When the man returns, he is surprised to still see all the lights on. He opens the door and there's this odor that, that smells bad. And he wonders what's going on, and so he searches all the downstairs, and there's nothing he can find, and so he goes upstairs. And he discovers that this smell is coming from this closet that Jesus, his guest, I mean, imagine this guest that I've invited in here is nosing around where he doesn't belong. And he's gotten into this little closet where I've hidden my porn. And I've got all my income tax records and Jesus has them all strewn out on the floor. And he looks at me and he says, you know, you claim too much charitable deductions here because I know you didn't give anything to the church last year. And he says, uh, you misstated your income. And you've hidden this porn here, but don't you realize you hadn't hidden it from me? And at that time, the man gets angry. And he says, look... I have invited you as a guest. I have fed you. I've given you the nice bedroom, the guest bedroom. I have treated you better than any guest I have ever had. And you go going through my private stuff. And Jesus looks at him and said, Yes, you've treated me well as a guest. But I'm not satisfied just being a guest. I want, I want to be the owner of this home. In fact, I want you to find the deed to the house, and I want you to sign the deed of the house over to me and I want to be in control of everything you do, everything you think, everything you say, and everything that goes on in this house. No longer will there be anything hidden from me or out of sight from me. And the treatise ends by saying, that's exactly what Jesus wants from us. Most of us are willing to call Jesus our Savior and know that we've got some fire insurance. Many of us only see the Christian life as going to heaven or not going to hell. For some of us, it's all about in the sweet by and by. But Jesus says, I'm glad to be your Savior. I'm glad to have purchased your salvation. I'm glad that you confess me as Savior. But now, I'm ready for you to confess me as Lord, as King. I want to be the boss. I want to be the owner 
of your heart and soul. And so this is the question. This is the question for this hour. As you look deeply into your life, is Jesus just king for a day? Or is he king and Lord forever? Amen. Please bow your heads as we prepare our hearts to give back to God a portion of what he has given us. Holy God, we come before you with thankful hearts. Thankful for your abundant grace that comes and reaches us right where we are. We thank you for the multitude of ways that you bless us. All of us, the disciples of this congregation and beyond. We long to give everything back to you as an act of worship. The talents that you have given, the resources that you have blessed us with, and, mo- and the most precious currency of all time. We give it all back to you as an act of worship and as a response to the grace that you give us. We long to see your kingdom come here on the earth. Amen. As the ushers are now coming forward for the morning offering, we lift our hearts to God in gratitude for all that he has given us.
Father, we give thanks for the ways that you're going to multiply and use these gifts. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As we prepare to sing our last hymn, uh, which is number 185, When Morning Gills the Skies, and we'll just sing verses 1 through 4, um, I issue the invitation, and I'm going to start doing this almost every Sunday. Um, my job is not to worry about if anybody comes. Uh, my responsibility is to give the invitation. Maybe you have a need that you just want to come and spend a moment at the altar. Maybe someone else has a need and you want to come and pray for them. If you're here and you would like to become a part of our church family by joining either on profession of faith or transfer your membership, we also invite you to come as we sing 185. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the precious fellowship of the Holy Spirit, go be and abide with each of you this day and forevermore. And happy Thanksgiving. Amen.
Hey guys, it's Drew from Central United Methodist. And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. That's Matthew chapter 25, verse 40. In this next series for Central Youth, we will be talking about what it means to go against the grain of what society says is right, and instead jumping into life by audaciously leading with love. Will you dare to be rebellious? I'll see you Wednesday.